He has risen. He has risen. He has risen. He has risen. Good morning and welcome to the Greenbush Reform Church. Our interim pastor is Reverend Rhett Zabreski and my name is Tammy Markell. This morning's announcements, on Monday, April 1st, we will be meeting at 6.30 p.m. in the church lounge. I should say the search committee, I'm sorry, search committee will be meeting. Um, Consistory has approved a wonderful team of dedicated volunteers to begin the long process of discerning who we'll, we might call as our next minister of word and sacrament. We are grateful to have Reverend Rhett Zabriski as our interim pastor during this long process. And we need to keep these people in our prayers during this time. There will be no godly play, children in worship, or Sunday school this morning. Sunday school will take place next week, but there will be no godly play or children in worship. If you notice someone you live by or will be visiting today, would you like to deliver one of the Easter plants? Please let Pastor Peggy know whom you would be giving them to. They would, you would be bringing them much joy. All of those listed as from a friend need to go out today. And if you also ordered uh, and paid for a plant, please take them home with you after church today. We still have a few spots left for the fellowship host for April and May, so please remember to sign up the, for those spots. We have quite a few new prayer requests for this week. Um, Brian Becker's granddaughter and Beth Clark's niece was uh, Brittany was just diagnosed with breast cancer this week and will be starting chemotherapy this week. She needs our prayers because she's also five and a half months pregnant, so it's a very serious situation. The family of Richard Wadsworth, as he entered the nearer presence of our Lord on March, 20, <clears throat> March 23rd, Reverend Paige Convis and Justin Foster and family as Reverend Paige's mother Tammy Convis entered the nearer presence of our Lord on March 26th. The family of Thomas Burns as he entered the nearer presence of our Lord on March 29th. And Linda, a friend of Laura Patton's who has numerous health issues. Do we have any other announcements or prayer requests at this time? Let us gather our hearts for the worship of God as Justin leads us in the prelude.
Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Christ is risen. Indeed, he is risen. Amen. Amen. Hymn is 221. Let us stand and make music together. called us to lives of holiness, but we have not lived them. Let us confess our sin to Almighty God with a prayer of confession in the morning bulletin. With one voice, let us pray. Father in heaven, we confess to you that we have often been blind to your gift of life. We have heard the bad news of our folly and missed the good news of your life. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. We have all wished for heaven, but we want to get there without dying. We have wanted magic in place of the real goodness that is resurrection. Forgive our sin and teach us the truth of the Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. this day of all days, we celebrate, note, remember, and give thanks for the greatest assurance we have that God has come to be with us. For Christ is risen, and all will be well.
is number 322. prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit in him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully Bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people who walk upon it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I've given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the ends of the earth. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants. Let the desert and its towns be lifted up, the villages that Kedar inhabits. Let the inhabitants of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the tops of the mountains. Let them all give glory to the Lord and declare his praise. From the Apostle Paul, these words. Now I remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news I proclaim to you, which you in turn received and in which you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed unless you have come to believe in vain. Now this is what we proclaim, that Christ is raised from the dead. How then can some say there is no resurrection of the dead? For if there is no resurrection, 
then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did, if he did not raise, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sin. Then those who also died in Christ have perished. For if in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But the fact is this, Christ has been raised. The first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ, then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to the Father after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and every power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet, but when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that this does not include the one who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to the one who put all things in subjection under him, so that God may be all in all. Will as many as are able please stand for the reading of the gospel. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting at the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, here is the place that they laid him. Go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. They went out. They fled from the tomb in terror and amazement, for they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Young people, come join me. We're going to sit in the front row this morning because, as you can see, your place is... No, 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 no. Up, up, up. Come on, Bill. Seats. Because your place has been taken by flowers. <laughs> Isn't that awful? You've just been. Come on, guys. Come on over here. Come on over here. Pack yourselves in. There you go. There you go. Okay. Did, did you see the Easter bunny this morning? Some did. Some didn't. Because some of you perhaps got Easter baskets. And some. Oh, good for you. A baby seal. That's, that's kind of an unusual Easter thing. Does it have chocolate ears? Well, are you going to bite the chocolate ears off? Oh, okay. Okay. 
Um, some, sometimes we get Easter baskets, sometimes we don't. Hey, hey, hey. Did you guys, do you remember Christmas? Did you have a Christmas tree? Yes. Okay. Now, I want to ask you a question. Where in the Bible does it talk about the Easter bunny, and where in the Bible does it talk about the Christmas tree? Doesn't talk about either one of those in the Bible anywhere. And that's something for us to remember. That because we are people and we like to tell stories, we get all kinds of stories that we attach to the things that are really important. The thing that is really important about Easter is Christ is risen. Christ is risen. And we have little things, like one of the reasons for all the flowers is that the flowers help us remember that Christ is risen, because all of those flowers talk about Easter in some ways. I mean, the Easter lilies, the white ones, they're like the trumpets that the angel played. And the, the tulips, you know, they're like the chalice that you see on the communion table. And the hyacinths with all the little, little flowers on them, that's like all the different books of the Bible or all the people in the church. You know. So there are things that can remind us. What is important as we go through life is to remember and keep focused on the main thing, which today is the main thing, Christ is risen. Let's try that once more. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Amen. Let us pray. Bless us, Lord Christ. Keep us focused on you, that we might live the full life with all the extras. Amen. Congregation, will you bless these children? And you have something for them. And you have something for them, Pastor. Right, so we do. We do. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Stay right there. Stay right there. Because you heard Tammy say earlier that we don't have Sunday school today. So, we do have something else. Everybody take a piece of paper. You get to pick what color you, take the pack, and you get to pick what color you'd like. You guys can come get a piece of paper too. Everybody gets a piece of paper. You can right there, that's fine. And you may have more than one if you wish. If you don't like that one because it's ripped, just drop it on the floor. You can take another one. That'll be good, okay? Now, what we've got for you is stickers. Just, just put them on the floor. What we've got for you is stickers. And while I'm talking to your parents and your grandparents, you can make yourself a story. Pulpit mic is on. Yes. Okay. I'll I'll try and yell, and we'll we'll see how it goes. In the name of God, Amen. 
We're going to have a uh, division of the house this morning. Some of you will say, I'm with you. And others of you will say, oh, come on, get real. How many of you hated grammar when you were, hated grammar when you were kids <laughs> at elementary school? I'm one. I, I just, I just didn't get grammar at all. There are some people, mainly those who teach grammar to elementary school kids, who really think it's important and who love it. And I, I love those people. They're good people. But if you're one of the ones that didn't like grammar, then the sermon this morning is for you. Because what we're going to do this morning is learn grammar the easy way, and we're going to learn it from life. Okay. All right, and if you want to hate me because I don't like grammar, that's fine. I'm an interim. I'll be gone sometimes. <laughs> the question is, how do you punctuate your life? Let us imagine that you're at a convention. All of you have been to at least one convention in your life somewhere for some reason. Yes, you're at the convention. When you went to the convention, they probably gave you a name tag. At this convention, you're going to get the name tag, but all you can put on the name tag is a punctuation mark. What are you going to put on your name tag? What kind of punctuation mark characterizes your life. For some people, philosophers, scientists, hopefully preachers, the punctuation mark will be the question mark. Remember Victor Borga and his routine on that? <laughs> Is that you? Philosophers, scientists, hopefully preachers, it is also, remember, gossip columnists, inside traders, and blackmailers. <laughs> Would you like a question mark? Are you perhaps an exclamation point? Again, Victor. <laughs> Editorial columnists. This is the absolute truth about who you should vote for. And then they give their reasons. Some preachers are like that. All artists, every human being who produces a work of art is saying to all of us, this is something that the world has lacked until I came along, you need to have this. But the exclamation point is also all dictators, some members of the IRS, 60 Minutes staff. Are you an exclamation point? Maybe your quotation marks. There are people whose punctuation life is quotation marks. Research scholars, what they try and do is put out what is objectively true apart from what they are. All White House staff speak only in quotation marks. <laughs> That's their job. That's their job. Most corporate staff are the same way. Most journalists, the best ones in fact, do as well. And then there are the others who are not so happy, the fundamentalists of whatever area of human life who insist that their way is the only way. Some theologians, there is a theologian named Bernard Lonergan. I am sure you have never heard of him. I hope you have never heard of him. <laughs> Uh, he, his theology is fine. Uh, 
I gave up reading him. It's a big book. Well, he has many books. I gave up reading him about halfway through the first book when I read the sentence. Now, in the 39th place, no. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. Sociologists. Sociologists who tend to try and quantify that which is obvious to all the rest of us. And customer service people whose job it is to read the paragraph in front of them regardless of what the person on the telephone has said to them. <laughs> Finally, is your life a comma? All politicians. It really doesn't matter what the politician says. Somebody will object to it. And as soon as they do, there's a comma. And the politician says something else to try and and respond to that. All salespeople who are trying to make the sale, and on and on. Okay, your punctuation personality is going to affect how you live and how you relate to everyone around you. Let's just take the very common, very useful, and preeminent phrase for human beings, I love you. How do you punctuate it? It's going to make a difference. How about if we put I love you in quotation marks? One thinks of Archie Bunker perhaps. Of course I love you Edith, you're my wife. How about if we put I love you with the question mark after it? <laughs> Every single married person, certainly including myself, has had I love you with a question mark behind it at least once <laughs> in the relationship. I love you, comma, meaning maybe I love you, but what's really important. <laughs> I love you, dash. I love you, quick, exclamation point. Punctuation is a sign of meaning, and it is the function of religion, including Christianity, to create and to provide meaning. That is an enormous need in the world in which we live. <coughs> One of the characteristics of our age, it has happened in some other ages, before, but it hasn't happened among human beings in the Western world for a long time. Our age is lacking a common frame of meaning. We do not have a generally understood idea of what's real and how we fit in. That's why our politics is in such disorder. That's why some of our families are in such disorder. Human beings need a common understanding in the community in which they live of what is real and how we fit in. The age in which we live lacks that. It's not just that there's no agreed religion. There's no agreed anything, hardly, these days. So for us, this Easter Sunday, to get it down to something manageable. We can't solve the problems of society, but we can at least for ourselves be clear about our own faith, and we can do it with punctuation. How do you punctuate the phrase, Christ is risen? There are three that I want to highlight for us. We can punctuate Christ is risen with quotation marks. That is how Annas and Sapphira did it in the Acts of the Apostles. You remember them? They're the ones who said to the community, yep, we're all in. And then they sold a piece of property and kept some of the money back and lied about it. Ended up dead, but still. They were saying Christ is risen in quotation marks. 
It's possible to look like a Christian and even to convince yourself that you are, but the reality ends up being a shell. The one talent man that, who hid the talent in the ground is another one. He was afraid. He might have said Christ is risen, but it didn't change his life. The women in Mark, they said nothing to anybody because they were afraid. They changed, of course, as life went on, but at that moment, they had Christ is risen. Is it you? Is it somebody you know? How do you know? Well, are you constantly present at functions you do not like with people you despise? If you are, perhaps your view of the world is in quotation marks. Are you tyrannized by the world? The good news is, fear not. I have overcome the world. And that's what the women heard at the end of Mark's gospel. There are others in the church who will say Christ is risen with a question mark. For many, especially in our materialistic and scientific age, the resurrection of the Lord is really, really difficult. These things don't happen. How could it be as scientifically impossible? On and on and on and on and on. Christ is risen with a question mark is the mark of those who have drunk deeply at the springs of the age. But it isn't just us. That's where Nicodemus was when he came to see Jesus. Can a man be born when he is old? Enter into his mother's womb again and be born. Nicodemus didn't see how what Jesus was talking about could be possible. That's the problem the scribes and the Pharisees had. Can anything good come from Nazareth? It was their constant question. There is the current group called the Jesus Seminar. Uh, Marcus, Cross, Marcus Borg and a man named John Crossan. They've put together this seminar of scholars and they go through the New Testament and they mark which things Jesus did say, maybe could have said, and definitely didn't say. And they can do this, of course, because they are the ones that have the tape recording of how those things went in, in the old days. They have set a question mark before Christ is risen. How do you recognize if this is characteristic of you? Well, if it happens, if you are one of those who says, this can't be happening to me, when indeed it is. The question mark is the mark of folk who prefer or believe advertising rather than life. The good news, the gospel this day, is that our opinions do not change reality. Whether God has raised the Lord Jesus from the dead or not is a fact. It is not a fact that can be demonstrated to the intellectual satisfaction of every human being alive today in this age or in any other age. But that that opinion cannot be changed does not alter the reality out there that is the fact. When I was younger, I don't do it any longer, but when I was younger and really arrogant instead of just mildly so, uh, people would say to me, oh, you're a preacher. You know, I don't believe in God. And my response always was, well, fortunately, God believes in you. <laughs> and usually that ended the conversation. Christ is risen is not dependent on an opinion poll for its validity. It is the reality of God in God's dealing with God's creation. And then there is Christ is risen with the exclamation point. This is how Peter said it. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And it is how the church has said it from the beginning. This is what doctrine is about. Putting the exclamation point and the period under it. It doesn't mean that the church and that human beings never have doubts. Of course we have doubts. 
life changes, we feel differently, things are not the same every day, much less over generations. But thou art the Christ, Christ is risen, is the foundation. Slippage is possible, but the roots are secure. St. Paul, for all that he said that is questionable, strange, he was rooted in this reality that Christ is risen, that whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. The gospel, in that, the good news, is to try and to live this way most of the time. Nobody makes it all the time. St. Peter denied him. St. Paul gets into these snits with himself about whether he is Jewish or Christian. Mother Teresa got mad at building inspectors who wanted to change the houses in which she had her, her girls staying. The gospel is to live this way most of the time. That can be done. Christ rose to punctuate our lives, yours and mine. May we hear the good news. Christ is risen. And go forth to live in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Bless us, Lord God. You have made us your people. Help us to be faithful, to be a witness, to live joyfully. In Christ we ask it. Amen. As is the habit in this congregation, tithes and offerings are collected in the basket at the back. Some have put them coming in, some will do so going out. Let us give thanks for them in prayer. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. Grant that they might be used to proclaim your good news in this community and all the world. In Christ we ask it. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. So many things in our lives, O oh Lord. So very many things. We read the old stories, we hear some of our grandparents tell them, and we can hardly believe it, that there was a time when we lived at home with several generations, working the farm, and somehow survived with no newspapers, no telephones, no smartphones, no internet. There was a time when the only wristwatch one needed was a calendar, and the only thing that really mattered was whether it was winter, spring, summer, or fall. So many things in our lives, so many demands. Grant in the midst of our multitudinous activities your presence. 
As we walk the streets, let us see you, the risen one, in that stranger's face. As we pay attention to our daily tasks, let us be aware of you as the context in which all our life takes place. May we punctuate our lives, Lord Christ, with the sign that you have intended for us. Let us be full and effective as the skeptic, as the witness, as the reporter, as the lover, the things that you have created us to be. We offer you our prayers this day for all who suffer, especially this day who suffer from not knowing you. There are many millions, billions in fact, throughout the world. Grant, O oh Lord, that your whole creation might come to your kingdom, that perception of your goodness, of your love and of your grace might spread more and more. We offer you our prayers this day for those of our fellowship and family who need your care in a special way. Hear us now as we name them in the quiet of our hearts. Grant to each one the needful gift, whatever it might be. In some cases, challenge. In some cases, just a kick to get them going. In others, healing, courage, hope. We pray for those who lead in all activities of human endeavor, especially at our time for those who lead in government, who lead in a time where there is no clear understanding of who we are and how we are to be. Grant us, Lord God, your grace that out of it might come a fuller life for all humanity. We pray for those in medicine, in the caring professions. We pray for those who make widgets and the little things that keep our lives going. At the last, Lord God, would we pray for ourselves. Christ is risen every day, and we don't see it every day. Help us even when we don't see it to develop those habits and discipline that let us live it. This we ask in the name of the risen one, Jesus the Christ, who taught us when we pray to say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The hymn is 216. Let us stand and make music together.
and serve the Lord. May the blessing of God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day and each day.